In this video, I'm going to show you how to export data from RadGrid View for WinForms to the HTML file format. So as you can see here, I've previously created a WinForms application that contains a RadGrid View with information being pulled from the AdventureWorks database. These are actually products being pulled back from the AdventureWorks database. And here in the lower right hand corner of this application, I've placed a simple RAD button that will be our export button and currently it contains no code. So let's go ahead and implement the code for this button to export our RadGrid view out into the HTML file format. So I'm going to exit out of our application and let's jump straight into the code behind by double clicking the button and let's implement the code needed to export RadGrid view inside of this event handler. So to get started, I'm actually going to use a class called export to HTML and let's call the object we create exporter and we'll create a new instance of it. And as you can see, it would like me to pass in a RadGrid view, uh, that being the RadGrid view that I would like to export. So I'm going to pass in the RadGrid view contained on our form. And if we take a look at this object now, we can see that it contains a few different properties that we can set in addition to the RadGrid view that we would like to export. I can set visual settings. I can set the file extension of the file I would like to export. I also have some options available for hidden columns, hidden rows, and summaries. I can set the scale of the file. I can also set a caption and a border thickness for the uh, table that contains our data. So let's go ahead and set a few of these options now. I'm going to start out by setting the file extension. And we'll set the file extension to HTML since we're outputting to an HTML file. And now let's set whether or not to export visual settings. I'm going to set this to false. And we can also set how we want to handle hidden columns. So if we look at this, as you can see, I can choose not to export hidden columns. I can choose to always export them, or I can choose to export them as hidden. I'm going to go ahead and select to not export them. So if we take a look at our next option that's available, the hidden row option, I have pretty much the same options available. Uh, I'm going to, again, choose to not export this uh, particular type of row. And if we take a look at our exporter object once again, let's go ahead and set the summaries export option. And as you can see for this option, I can choose to not export. I can choose to export all summaries. I can choose to export the summary on the bottom or on the top. Well, for this option, again, I'm going to select do not export. And then finally, let's, say, let's set the uh, table caption for our exporter. So I'm going to set the table caption to AdventureWorks products, since we're pulling back products from the AdventureWorks database. And now that we've set up all of our options for our exporter, we can go ahead and export our RadGrid view out into a file. And we're going to do that again by accessing the exporter object, and I'm going to call the run export method on it. And this method just takes a file name that I would like to output our information inside of the RadGrid view to. So I'm going to specify a file inside of my source folder on my C drive and let's call this my data. And now that we've set up our HTML exporter, we can go ahead and run the application and we'll go ahead and test it out. So here's my RadGrid view once again with all of my products information. I'm going to go ahead and click the export button and let's jump over here to Windows Explorer. And as you can see, it's created a file called my data that's an HTML file. And if I double click this file, it's going to open up our web browser and we can take a look at the information it contains. So here is all of the data that was contained inside of our RadGrid view. As you can see, here are the different column names. And then it contains a title that we specified as the caption. And then it contains all of the information specific to each column. So if we scroll down a little bit, I want to show you something real quick. As you can see, for the list price column, it contains things that would be normally be currency values, but they have not been formatted. Well, we can actually format these values while we're exporting them using the HTML exporter. So let's go ahead and take a look at doing that now. So I'm going to switch back over to Visual Studio. and Let's close out of our application. And then let's jump back in here to where we've created our exporter. And if we take a look at the exporter object once again, as you can see, it contains two different events contains the HTML cell formatting event, and this event is the event we would use to format cell values as they're being output into our file. 
It also contains the HTML table caption formatting event, and this is what we would use if we want to format uh, the, the caption for our table uh, using any number of HTML specific options. Well, let's go ahead and implement the HTML cell formatting event. So I'll create a new event handler for that, and let's remove the exception from this. And if we take a look at the event arguments passed into this event, as you can see, it gives me the column index that's currently being processed, the row index, the type of row being processed, and it also contains the HTML cell element object. This is the actual object that will be output into our file, and this event arguments also contains the inner cell value, which is the value currently being processed. So the first thing we need to do when we're inside of this event is determine if the current cell being processed is the cell we would like to format. So I'm going to do that by using an if statement. And we'll say if radgridview.columns, and we're going to use the grid column index passed in by our event arguments. And we're going to detect if it equals radgridview.columns. And we're going to check for the list price column. And we also need to make sure that the column that is currently, or that the cell being processed is of the correct type. So I'm going to say and e dot grid row info type equals type of, and the uh, cell that we would like to process should be of type grid view data row info. And so now that we've checked all of this information, we know that we're going to be in the correct type of cell to format once we've reached this area of the if statement. So let's go ahead and set the HTML cell element value to be formatted. So we'll set it to be string.format and we're going to format it as a currency value. And then let's pass in e.innerCell value and again inner cell value is the value currently being processed. So now that we've set all of this up our values should be correctly formatted once we export them out into our HTML file. So let's go ahead and run the application one more time and take a look at this in action. And I'll go ahead and click the export button and let's jump back out into Windows Explorer once again. And I'm going to open up my data inside of the web browser once again. And as you can see, as I scroll down, all of the values and the list price column are now formatted to be currency values. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to export data from RadGridView to the HTML file format. Thanks for watching.